Great. Let's go. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, you guys love this class. Yoki. Okay. And then I'll loosen the vertical. Side to side. to a wave through. I found an incredible video yes, just last night of another Maasai, Maasai dancer. Incredible doing the wave, I'll send it to you all later. Just phenomenal. This flexibility in the hip, in the spine. Really, really impressive. Try one, there's actually one thing you can do with this because what we tend to do on our we tend to this is the center and we, we keep everything within it. So we're not we're, we're trying to kind of one protect the center but motivate everything from the center of the body. So in that kind of in this kind of way, you're kind of going here, it's coming out, but it's always kind of staying here in a way. Now, if I watch someone that's dancing with it because they've got a different kind of function to it, they also have a feeling like the waves kind of really passing out. So it's as if the center's shifting in the in the body. <clears throat> so get a sense that you can also work the head a little bit more where you feel like the center of the motion really goes into the head and the body and then pass it down also. So just play a little bit with it. it it's, it's technical, but it's kind of a feeling as well, but it's the sense that I can release everything. And actually all these seitai movements work in, the, in a similar way that the first one's kind of the center of it is the head. And then the second one is the chest. And then this is here. So you're working different centers of the body in terms of the Think. In Aikido, we tend to stick to the, the kind of physical center of the body, which is nice. It's really where our function comes from. But just know that you can shift it a little bit. And in terms of mobility, that's really helpful to be able to shift. So if you feel any specific kind of tension, today I've got the shoulder is pretty tense. So I'm gonna also try and work just that specific part but I'm gonna try and pass the motion into it. Pass the motion into it. Or it might also be the knees, so it might be the lower body, but just know that you can kind of, with motion, just start to really work specific areas of the body. And just play a little bit with combining all the movements. And you've got tons of range of motion, even without moving the feet. Play a little bit with the shoulders as well. Rolling around, circling the body. Uh, 
You start to feel you can hinge from the hips as well. So front and back. Don't go too far with the back. Just allow the body to hinge. And then the, the, the main thing with this is really let the pelvis do most of the work. So I don't want to go into these kind of crouching, these kind of positions. Let, in this case, the pelvis really do most of the work. So you can do these kind of things with the body as well. So keeping the arms and the structure of the body quite long. Unless I'm really close to curl the body up. So for instance, if we're going to a Kenny work, I'm going to keep the spine nice and long all the time. That's uh, nice. That's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, very nice. Very nice. And it's not something I do, but you can try it always in the, in the Seitai classes, they will do it to music. So they'll do it to classical music or they'll do it to something. My question to them was always, why don't you do it to other kinds of music? Why do you always do it to the same kind of music? But they use it in a way to get out a little bit of, of the, I mean, they do things in a group. So they're doing it in a group, which changes everything. <clears throat> and they're doing it in a room that's usually quite dark. <laughs> and you're doing music. So there's a little bit where it turns into a bit of a disco for me. So I don't do the music. I don't do it to music. And I never really do it in groups apart from this, but just get a sense. I think the point of that is to actually, when they're using classical music, also like catching ideas from the music. You've got different rhythms, different qualities. And they're using the music to influence the, the movement a little bit. My feeling is you don't need it. You, you've got everything already, so you don't really need another external influence. But sometimes it can be helpful. Just start to play also with the hands as well. Now, so rolling the hands into it, passing them out, and just feel how that's going to change everything. So the hands coming out from the body. What do I need to do to really maintain the center of the body and maintain a sense of groundedness in the feet? And that means a little bit really enjoying, a little bit coming out of balance. So just get a sense that you can also play with the body out of balance. And this is what we spend most of our time doing in Aikido in terms of unbalancing people. It's really using the limbs, taking them away from the body and trying to draw the structure away from itself. And the more supple I can be in that, the more healthy the practice is for me. So that's kind of the interesting thing, supple. Let them come to the ground, let them roll up. Let's uh, just follow the body a little bit. Nice. Yeah, 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 great. Okay. Yeah, some of you are going to hear already, so just follow this. Imagine you've got like these positions where you're actually locking the joints up. So it's a bit strange because, again, I've got to do it myself, but it's the feeling of really winding through the joint. So if the technique's, if the, if the technique's bad, it's just that and that. So this isn't really a good technique because I can just receive that into the body, into through the arm. It'll hurt the arm and the risk is they're going to break my wrist, but actually not controlling you. So what you want to feel is like the technique's actually going to affect the center out. <clears throat> so just get a sense that there's a kind of winding through the structure. Kotagai, Shihonagi, these, they're really variations on each other. So Kotagai, Shihonagi really actually sometimes labeled as the same techniques, depending on what style you come from. from. In our style, we make it specifically, they are different, but they really work the joint system pretty similar. Just a little bit of a twist. Just there. Again, just notice the difference when the arms really pulled out from the body. Really tricky to kind of stabilize that. And if it's kind of close to the body. So the technique has no extension of the person. I've also, I'm really quite free to, to move with it. As it pulls out, this is a really tricky position. You're also stretching the shoulder out of place and very dangerous. Yeah, that's it. I'm just that. I just get the feeling you can make it a little bit more into motion, kind of spiraling the body into it. This way. This way. 
This way. That's it. Nice. Yeah, 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 that's it. There we go. Okay, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. We'll work the other side of this. And the, the easiest one to work with is like your Rumin area. So. <clears throat> You can do Shihonai and do Kotagashi, but they're a bit fine because you're, you're working with fine detail. So Iriminai is a bit more broad. So just coming to this kind of position and just focus now on drawing the shoulder through and stepping through. So you've got to really this, this coming through. You can also just keep the feet down. The key now is the extension with the shoulder. So the main thing not to do in this is to do things like this and push through with the arm. Just get a sense of the motion itself coming from the center of the body, this coming through, and then you just follow that. Just kind of work your way into it this way. The upper body's pretty loose, and then coming through with it. Just play with it a few times. Also just put the arm here. If you want, you can imagine you're taking the head into the shoulder. There, there. Just really create something that's quite loose. And then come through with it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Just do what you're just going to shift the focus into the palm of the hand. So if you imagine in this case, rather than taking this part, you're going to take the top of the, the underside of the chin. So that it's like the hand's going to come up and it's a bit like a palm strike. So what you do in this case is here and it's a little bit tighter to the body. So you imagine the, the shoulders here. Sometimes I use this as if this is out if I've lost the control. So I've lost that and I can't go to that position because this has no power. So sometimes go to that. And sometimes if the person's really tall, because I don't want to go into these kind of positions. So I use this kind of position to do it. Now it's based on the same motion, but it's a little bit tighter. So it's there. And the key part, the thing that's the same as the body work, the there, there, that is the same. So what's happening is to kind of wave over it. So I'm trying to get the person uprooted into this position, up over the top, and then down through it. So you've got a kind of circular tipping over, tipping over, and then get that motion is going to come from the hip. From the hip, from the hip, and then coming through it. So just play, you can play with the palm, you can play with the arm. And once you've got that kind of principle, you can actually do this with just the body. So side sensei, sometimes you can see him show it just with the body, no arm at all. Just get used to this idea of rolling up over. That's it, let's play with it a little bit. Okay. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> My teacher all the time in England, well, he would always say this. It's like he said, don't top off the egg when you do it. So if you imagine you've got a circle like this, it's like a kind of egg because as you go over, there's a tipping point which is quite tight, and then I curl it over, and then I go down this way. But if I do my technique like this, I go, and then I do, this will just get blocked all the time because you're basically passing back into the force of the person. And what you'll do is you stabilize the person rather than tip them over the back. So just get a sense that when you do this, either with the arm, this, there's a bit more there. 
Yeah. And then that. So I know Steven Seagal made it. I really now popular with this kind of boom coming through. And that's one variation of Rumi now. It works because he's very tall, so he's coming over the top naturally. But for us kind of normal people, when we do this, it needs to have a sense of rolling over, rolling over there. So the motion's less a kind of that, and it's more the yeah. So my interest is really on this, almost on the spot, tipping the person over. Let's give it a try a little bit. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's it. You, you need something really supple, and the power is going to come from again from the ground. So it's not really going to come from the. That's good, but I want something really heavy in the body to back it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. We'll just do one more here. This comes from the show Manucci. It's one of my favorite things to do solo. So what you do is like this right side forward, you come through with the show Manucci. So the hand's gonna come right up to the head like this. And then what you do from the hip is curl everything in, step into the back, and then you find the Rimini here, up over, and then press it through, release it. So it goes like this. You can change sides or keep the same side, just so you get it kind of into the body, but you've got this raising out. And then from the hip, curl, pass through. This sticks to the shoulder, and then you wave up over the top, press it through, coming through. Just try that. It's just showing you cheap. Eating me now. Really try and get the hips. Create the motion. <clears throat> Nice, nice, nice. Fast. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this also comes down to intention, and this is where the, the, the taijutsu and sword work really start to come together in terms of the riyadh, what I'm, what I'm trying to do. If you think about the sword work, what I'm trying to do all the time is get to the center. So I'm not trying to kind of cut around all the time, but I'm trying to actually cut through to the person. So in this case, what, what you can do in the solo work, <clears throat> forget about there being a partner. What I'm going to do is like go up and then just cut everything through that point. So you're actually, you're, you're creating a, an opening for yourself. So I get the opening here. And then what I want to do rather than that, go around, I want to go through, straight through it. So when you're work, you can you can play with this, but when you're not working with a partner, a bit like the Saburi work, you can go straight down the line. You don't need to accommodate a partner. <clears throat> and what I'm doing when I'm working with a partner is not is not going around them. I'm trying to go through them. And because they're in the space, I can't occupy it yet. So I need to go around them. But my intention isn't to go around. My intention is to cut through straight into the into the person. And you do it by going around them. But that happens because the partner's in the way. But it's on the solo you don't need to do that. It's actually practices the hip work much, much clearer. That, that's it. The important move in this one's that like just that second hip work. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 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 good. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this is one point as well. Just watch this. Try not to do this. So this is especially true for the part of it. But if I do this, just watch this. Don't cut this down. It comes to here. If I cut this down with the person, I put them in this position. 
here. That position is really, really close to my body. So the person can really just strike, strike you with the hand. So, <clears throat> and what you'll do is you'll focus all of their attention into the fist. So you'll make them mad because they've got something to resist if you try and cut it down. So don't try and cut it down. In this case, you go here and I just come around it this way. So my interest is actually in eliminating through this straight in. So I'm trying to get around the hand, but I'm not trying to cut it down because it's not, it's not, the hand's not of interest to me. It's a bit like the Bokken work. I'm not really interested in the Bokken. I'm interested in the center of the body. So when you come here, don't do that. Try something like this. So I'm kind of, kind of passing through it. The hand's not really important to me. So <clears throat> again, you're trying to get to the back of the person and the center. So that's my priority is to get to the hips, uh, it's to get to the spine. Dong, dong. So I'm actually interested in the control of the back. Yeah, that's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, that's it, Nick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just pass right through it. Yeah. That's it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And you're going to do this in one motion. So watch this. Boom. Boom. You rotate to this way. So just watch for doing this now. Boom, pass through, and then rotate. But that's all one motion. This comes from sword work because I come up and cut the body this way. So I'm rotating into it. So when you go boom, you go in. There. So I'm trying to track my center to the, that person's center. It's just, I'm trying to get to a really vulnerable part of their center, which is the back where they're all exposed. So I get that. Dum, 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 dum. And that, and then you're right in the back. The technique really doesn't matter from that point, but there's the icing on the cake technique. Um, Michael, what yeah. is Phantom Uke doing? What's my Phantom Uke? Yeah, I don't know. I find it really difficult to imagine this. Um, my phantom okay is doing this. Ah, 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 like this. <laughs> Something like that. Okay. All right. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Thank you. But I imagine them I imagine I'm just passing through them totally. <laughs> so they're they're not thinking at all. They just go to the ground. <laughs> and they go, oh, how did that happen? Perfect technique. That's what I imagine they think. It's not what they're really thinking. <laughs> Michael. Yeah. Can you show me your forefoot, your first foot in the, in the yes. first movement? Let's see. Let's see that. Yes, yeah, so you've got this movement. You just come in this way. Exactly. Come yeah. See, this way. Why do I want to kind of come, come straight into it? Because again, what I'm interested in is, is catching the person. Ooh, I can't see my head at all. So what I'm interested in is catching the person out. So. <clears throat> If they don't protect themselves, what happens? You just get it there. So you've got that root, and then the technique's not essential, but I need a kind of threat to come into it that way. So you've got like this way, and then just pass straight into it. Okay. So that's also a set. That's a setup for me to be able to step through into it that way, and then it comes in. Okay. Thank you. This is always tricky because. <laughs> You're doing a partner work that's we don't often do, or we need to do it solo. Hardly ever. But. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Very nice. Oh, okay, so we'll do another one, which is where the person's coming in with Yokomuchi. So what you've got, you've got a position and before you've managed to do something in response <clears throat> to that, they've already come in with the attack. So they're attacking the side of the head. So they're not going to come straight forward because you've got all this kind of in front of you. So they come right for the side of the head. And if you stay on that spot, you're going to get, get this. So you've got two options. I can avoid it by moving the body. I can go into it to avoid it. And in the first option we lose, we use is, is like plan A. I'm going to stop it before it really starts. So you imagine the person's coming up here like this. 
what you do is slide the body in and you do this this way so the first movement is now this this is like a hijacking of this motion so the shomenuchi is, is plan a always because i'm always going to try and get towards the head and the center to, to create them to do this kind of stuff that if that's off my timing's off that doesn't work i, I hijack that movement the person comes in and this comes in here so what you're doing now is raising it up and blending it in now this motion becomes rather than a strike towards the head becomes a blend with the hand so it becomes this 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 coming out just give that a try it's just the front hand in this case and you're going to meet it at an angle just off the diagonal yeah That's it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so just watch it. What I don't want to do in this case is push it out to the side because if you think about this strike coming in, if it's really heavy, what I can't do is try and move it this way. What I can do is cut it down into it. So if I use the cocky, what I'm using the cocky for in this case is transmitting the hip through the hand. This, but what I can't do is, in this case, do this. This is really weak because, because you're, you're using your shoulder in a weak position by doing something like that. So get the sense that what you do is actually, a, it's really a sort of this, 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 this. And the, the hand goes out to the side, but it does so because of the hip. That, that, I'm trying to show the feet as well. You've got this, this, this. But not dum dum. This will pull you out. It actually leaves you open for a strike, so. Yeah. Michael, yeah. what's yeah. your hand touching? I mean, is your hand on their on their wrist or on their palm? No, or? it's gonna go. It's gonna go here. So as the strike comes in, I'm aiming to go up and cut it down this way. So it's, oh, it's okay. cutting, cutting here, and that's so that the blade's gonna go into go into this part, and this prevents them. What I've got is the elbow down. This prevents them from coming back down. So if, if someone does a really weak atemi in this point, like it's here and they don't cut the arm down, I can drop the elbow and hit them in the side of the ribs. So I've got that motion, that motion. So I'll just abandon the yokonuchi, but what I need is for the person to get, to get this position. So I can't do that with the body, it won't go. So I want to really get the person here, get the person here, get the person here. Okay, thank That's you. It. Just get used to now the backhand and it's just place, putting it in place. So it's gonna go here, here. So it's just in place above the head. So you've got two actions now. This, 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 this. And I want just the hand to be available for me. So before it's just kind of useless. Now I want to really bring it with me. Bring it with me, bring it with me. Bring it with me. And what you're doing to now is what you're starting to do now is coordinate the feet with the hands towards this out. Da dum. Da dum. Da dum. That's it. This is where the kata forms a bit like a dance. Da dum. Da dum. Da dum. And there's really specific. And I'm past it as well. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it, that's it, that's it. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That's it. Okay, and then putting the backhand in, what you do with the backhand now is strike towards the head. So if I don't do this, the person's really free, so you, you'll deal with the arm, but you've got this. It's a problem. So they'll, they'll either come in, collapse the arm, strike the body, or they'll do something else. So I need to keep this attempt. This attempt is one of the ones that is essential because if I leave it out, it just won't go so well. So I get this. This is in this position. And then as I apply the hip, what I do is roll that down and it comes into the body. And that's been generated from the, from the back hip. This one. This one. So it's one motion, but the hips and the hands are really doing separate things. The front is blending. And the backhand is striking in. And it breaks a little bit with one rule. I've got one move to make a defense. In this case, I'm doing a blend down a strike. 
Normally you've got one move, I can either block it or I can strike. But in this case, you have to do something, because I catch it early, I can do both block and strike. So both actions come together. And yeah, it's just getting the feet and the hands first coordinating. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. This is a little bit where, the, where I can get confused with it. So I either, I either do one or I, you've got three choices and I either do one or two and I need to do the third choice. So watch this. I can do both hands coming in and blending and then they do something like this. So both hands begin to do the same thing. Or I can do both hands strike like that and they do something like that. What I want is this hand to blend and this hand to strike. So just get the feeling that what you're doing is really is really different things with the body. So uh, with the hands, this one blends, and this one's right. What I, what what will happen if I strike him with this hand? This will go really badly also because I'm I'm gonna hit with the bone here, and this will clash into this, and you will if it comes in really fast, the the arm's very likely to deaden. If it just will give you a really sharp pain, which won't really help you facilitate technique. So what I need to do as I do this is roll the wrist. I'm using the soft underside of the arm. With this part, I can't do really with the hand because it puts the shoulder in the wrong position. So I need to do this with the with that part of the hand. So I'm really hitting with that part. And that gets the blade of the arm pressing through. So you've got that kind of feel. If I do that, I'd push into it. And then you get blown back by the person. So just get this feeling, this, this. And this you can do is really slow. Blend, strike. Blend, strike, but they come together. Yeah. And again, it's actually in the hip work. It's not, it's that the hands are transmitting the hips. So. But first I need the idea of what I'm doing. I need to blend with the outside hand and strike with the inside hand. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. If, they, if this goes all to plan, you've got the person here and then whoa, and then you cut the body down and then they don't protect themselves and then you go poof, either onto the head or onto the collarbone, even better, poof, to press them down. And then the technique's not necessary. You don't need to go anywhere with it. So, but what happens as they come in, they receive this and they protect their head. Okay. So, and then what they're looking for is another attack. So I'm looking to get here, block this, receive it in the body and then either escape from it to get to the back to strike or just from this position, be able to adjust it to come in again. We don't tend to do this in training, but I've got to know that the person's really, really still dangerous. So you've got them in this position. So what I need to do now is go here, and this striking hand needs to now with the body, pass over to the hand. And I need to now really get to the back of the person. So that's the point when I when the arimi comes in now, because I need to get to the back. So you've got this, this, this. And then what I do is keep this extension out, this hand crosses over here, and then with the whole body, pass through. And then you've got exactly the same motion that you do in, this, in the Shomenuchi, this, this passing through. It's just you're doing it from a different position. So you've got that, the setup's different now. So you've got this, rolls over, rolls over, and I'm trying to protect the center line and the head. Pass through to the back, control, and then the technique's the same. Just passes through that. Give it a try.
So Java, accept this, this. Thank you. Ah, yeah, yeah. So I show you one mistake, just watch this. If I do this, this, and then I do that with the body, you see what that exposes in the body. So the person, if, they're any, if they've got any kind of intelligence, they'll forget about this hand and they go straight to the other hand. So if I expose the body as I do that, I give them a very clear target. So I watch it, dun, dun. and then what I've got to do is go all the way back to get in. So I never want to leave this position with the hips. This, now what I do with the hip is slide that in. Now the handwork is going to facilitate that motion in. So this, this, but that front hip is going to slide in. So eventually what you do with this movement is this, that straight in and then come in through with it. So later this becomes one, but get this idea. And then that's from the hip, hip, that, that, that. Again, it's where it comes from. So I need to be as efficient as possible. And I need to have the feeling of slicing the body through the motion. And keeping my attention all the time on the person's center. Michael, yeah, um, what's, I don't get this, sorry. What's happening here? When, you, when you've uh, blended and you strike and then you you... Yeah. The person's arms in this position. What I need to do is, is the arms in the way. So if I don't do anything, I'm going to pass through and they're going to hit me in the face with that hand. Or I just walk into it. So imagine they've got a blade in the hand. What I need to do is pass that hand around, which opens out the body. So what I'm trying to do is get the person from this position to that position. So I need to do this with the hands to do it. Makes sense. So you've got the person here. I need to get them here with the hands so that I can get to the back. So in order to do that, I need to do this, this, and then from that position, I've got this, I fall through. Make sense? No, but I'll figure no. it out. <laughs> Don't worry about it. You do like a dance. What's this? Go, 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 go. It's just like a dance. Ba, ba, ba. Go, 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 go. I don't worry about doing anything to anyone. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Just a dance, literally. Uh, this is really kind of catch training because you, you're not doing anything to anyone. Okay, good. So just go to this. This is one of the most functional movements we got in Aikido. It takes a long time to actually train it. And if you if you can get the logic of it, it takes a, it actually takes a while to kind of get it because it's a very tricky movement and it looks really specific. But one of the, the best thing that this teaches is the ability to roll around the body and protect the head. So you use this movement a lot when we do kind of like sparring stuff with punches or drills with punches when we come in and strike for the head. This movement is really, really, really a, one of the best movements to do. And it actually allows me to really hold the hold my ground as I do it. So just focus on this. This is like a wave through the joint system. Now, what I'm doing as I do this is, is not about passing the arm. So it's not about cutting the arm away. It's about protecting my center as I roll through. So it's like the arm is protecting this whole center line of the body. In order to do that, it needs to be really supple. So I can't do this with, with rigidity at all. So I need to, in this case, if you imagine a strike coming towards the head, something coming towards the head, I raise up, I blend with it, and I let the whole body carry it over. Raise up, carry it over. Raise up, carry it over. And I'm using the whole forearm and the power of this part of the body to press it away. So this is a really practical technique, but let's see if you can unlock it. It's just like that. I'm going to do like a dance, but the, the feel something coming towards you and you roll up around it. Don't worry too much about the feet. You can do different things with it, but the key is what's happening in the upper body from the spine. So it needs this kind of looseness. It needs a real kind of suppleness to it. This is just enough to give me time with a very sharp, fast punch. Just, just, just enough. And if it facilitates me to get to the back of the person, even better. 
but this will just just about save me. That's it, that's it, that's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great. That's it, that's it. Okay, just mix in now a little bit of rotation. This this movement kind of is hinged on on uh, Tainer Henko. So you also see uh, Saito Sensei sometimes said like Tainer Henko was a way to teach Urawasa footwork. So all these kind of rotating uh, movements we do to the back of the person. <clears throat> and I think what he means by that is also this idea of rota just rotating the body in. So yeah, it teaches very literally footwork that we do in in Urawasa techniques. But just kind of get the fit. You can unlock the type the the tiny hanker work. So just play a little bit with, with coming down to tiny hanker. Keep it quite loose, but just get the feeling that you have, all, you, you always have this because we start every class with it. So this idea of just rotating the body in. Now, whether you do that in a static way or you do it in a fluid way, you're working that same, that same core principle, which is just the idea that I can coil around, coil around. So do it quite lightly. It doesn't have to be kind of formal. But it's just to get that feeling of rotating around. And that rotation is coming from the core of the body. And I need a really good grounded connection to make this any any to make this useful. Okay, good. Just play with it. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. So just play with three things. Most of you know all these already. So <clears throat> just play with these three chitin movements. So you've got one, which is just to rotate the body. Just rotate the body. You've got the second one, which is tiny hanko, which is just coiling the body around on the front foot this way. And you've got the third one, which is the sirimi uh, tenkan coming in. So you roll the body in and you go around here. So almost all the movements we make in Aikido are variations on, on one of these. So just get this feeling. This and just mix them in really liberally, just do what you like. Let the hands kind of follow the body. Don't think too much about technique, I'm just thinking about rotating from the core. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. So it's really about locating the core of your body and just if you can just, just, just. Kind of spin it with the ground as well. That's it, that's it, that's it. That's it. That's it, that's it, that's it. <clears throat> Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Okay, just take the focus now. If I can get the, the idea like the axis is kind of rotating, get the feeling now what you want to do is, is make this useful. So really get the feeling now that you're actually impacting down with the feet. So I want to make the body useful as it's going through the rotation. The worst thing I can do in a rotation is something like this kind of come out of the ground. So as soon as I've lost the ground, I've lost my ability to, to, to use the body, use the structure. You can fall through the ground into the person, but this is a really specialist skill. We don't tend to do it in Aikido. So what I want you to feel now is like, as you go in, and this starts really with this very simple one, just the feeling of impacting into the ground. 
And I don't want to feel that I'm pressing it down. This is too much. But I also don't want to feel like the stretcher's kind of floating. I want to feel that the stretcher's settled. Boom. And then from these kind of positions, the arms are useful because I can generate the move. I can pass the movement into the hip. So the strong ground connection, hip, hip and then the hand. So just play a little bit with it. And the, 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 the good thing is we practice this all the time. When you do Tainahenko, when you do Kokinage, or Kokiho, we're doing this all the time. When you do Suarez or Kokiho, you're in the perfect position. The hips are grounded, go, and you do something like that. So we're, we're always training these kind of things, but it's just about unlocking it a little bit. So put it into motion, but really feel the feet, boom, boom. And use the hands just to kind of ground it as well. So I'm trying to connect to the ground and then take the hands, use them. This is really what we do all the time with the weapon work. It's the same structure. It's a little bit rounded. Down, 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 down. That's it. The hard part is to get this in big rotation movements. Try and keep that sense of groundedness. So when you've got it in kind of small movements, just see if you can open it out a little bit. That's it. This is why all the Kinagari techniques are quite hard because they require big, big rotation movements and grounded body. That's it, that's it, that's it. There we go, very nice. Okay, so just open this out now. What I want to do is a similar thing that we did with the Yokonuchi. So you got du -dum, one hand blocks, one hand strikes. Use the same kind of pattern. You can start by just kind of rolling with blocks. So what I'm doing with this kind of thing is just making contact with one hand. So I'm making contact and rolling into it. Making contact and pressing through it. So it's got this same idea of blending. It's, it's softer again because I'm not trying, sometimes you'll be blocking a strike, but I'm trying to get to the point where I can control it and press it through. So just now feel that what you're doing is, is contact with the hand, pressing the weight of the body through it. Again, we do this all the time when we do turn hand up, but we've got someone gripping us through it. You can imagine someone coming for a wrist grab if it makes it easier, but you can also imagine someone coming in to grab or strike the body. You're just gonna come out, connect, press the rock, press the connection to the ground, press the connection, press the connection, press it down, press it down. Yeah. Yeah. And it's got like a really suppressive quality in the hands. So it's got this kind of that's it. That's it. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Good, and then with the other hand, just explore striking. So what you've got now is the hand coming up to, to block, and then you've got the second hand's free. Now we tend to skip the strikes a lot of the time and go straight to a technique, it's trying to control the limb, or we're trying to control the head or something. But also know that you've got this freedom in this hand to once I've suppressed this connected to it, in the same motion, you've got the strike coming through with it. So just explore it, there's some really simple ones. And if you think about techniques like um, Kotegaishi, you suppress and you strike. Suppress, strike. So I'm drawing the person in and striking them at the same time. Drawing the person in, striking. Drawing the person in, striking. Drawing the person in, striking. And just play with different combinations. You can do really simple ones. And also this entry is you come into the inside of your community. Come in, in, suppress and strike. Suppress and strike. So Aikido techniques are literally, literally littered with a temi work. So you've got most of the time we, we focus on the suppression blending work. Firstly, a temi needs to be really part of the movement as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Just play with it. Okay, the rule now is this. You can only do one action. So I can't do this and then that. That's two. So try and get, all I need to do is bring, bring them together. Bring them together. Bring them together. So choose one and really refine it to the point when I can really feel like, boom, it comes together. If I get like, that's breaking a rule. So by the time you've made the strike, the person's not there anymore. They've already gone. So just get a sense of what you're doing is one motion. One motion. One motion. One motion. One motion. That's it. It needs to be one, otherwise it's like an extra, it's an added thing. It's an extra thing I'm putting in. So think about sword work. Everything's just one thing, boom, just one cut. One movement, one cut. That's it. Yeah, that's it, that's it, that's it. Nice, that's nice, nice. Great. So the last step in this case is if you think about all the cocky nagi techniques we have, these are basically whole body attempts. So we use a point in the body. Iriminagi is kind of an example. It's not quite, it's not a cocky nagi, but it uses the same kind of feeling. So Iriminagi is kind of the base for it because I get this feeling that the whole body is being channeled through one point. And that's really like an attempt, but it's not an attempt in a kind of classical sense <clears throat> because I'm not trying to distort the person. I'm not trying to kill them. I'm trying to neutralize them. I'm trying to neutralize the body totally. So it's a neutralizing movement, but it's got the quality of an atemi, like a cocoon, and I'm trying to collapse the whole structure. So just think about these kokunagi move, movements we made, and there's some really simple ones like tenchi nagi coming through, or this kind of kokunagi with the back elbow boom, coming through. And these all have this kind of quality of a temi work. So they're, they're a temi in the sense that they're like sword strikes. So the whole body's being channeled in through the strike, through the point of contact. And the whole body needs to be kind of recruited to it. So that means I need to be really grounded and channeling the whole body. So now that distinction between blending and striking kind of disappears because the whole body's doing both of both of those at the same time. <clears throat> and that tends to be done with one side of the body, but it can be done with all of the body. So just get the sense of what you what, just get the sense of possibilities. It's a bit abstract, maybe, but just get the feeling that you now do like a suppressive impact. Again, we train this right at the beginning of the class. When you do tiny hand and you do this, boom, boom. You're doing the same thing. You're just not really neutralizing the person. You're not trying to collapse the structure, but that quality is trained right at the beginning of tiny hand Boom, boom. Let's play with it. That's it, that's it, that's it, yeah. And just pick one that you're kind of comfortable with and just, just go into it a little bit deeper. You can also open them all up. So come into 10 can movements first, and then coming into it. You're never really, if you get lucky, you'll do the technique directly, but it's not really going to be always go your way. There we go. Yeah. 
That's it, that's it, that's it. Nice. Just, just the last couple of minutes, just take a Bokken or a Joe or whatever you've got at hand. And just, you're going to do the similar thing. Most of what we do in Aikido is in terms of technique, Ikkyo, Mikkyo, Sankyo, all this kind of stuff, it's really with grips. So it's really working with grips. What we do later in, the, in this kind of cocking, we've just been doing this kind of abandoning and go just to full body contact. But we tend to spend a lot of time in the grip work. So just play a little bit with the Bokken again, with the same idea. You can think the classic ones, Ikkyo, just rolling up coming into the grip. And I want the same kind of idea of really passing a percussive impact through the body this way. So extension, connection to the ground, everything's really important, but really with that suppleness of the body. So I don't want anything to lock up with that when I come to the grip. This is really tight locked, tight. So I really get a sense that everything's still fluid. And you don't always have to go into it. You don't have to go into anything. Just let it go around. And play a little bit with the bottom. The key thing is that I'm not pushing, pulling the bottom. Get everything moving from the center. So you can also build this up in very small movements. That's Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. And don't be afraid in this case, because you're training with a Bokken, don't be afraid to really grab it quite hard. So I'm really, I'm grabbing it in a very specific way, which is like how we grab like this. So I'm really, but I'm really grabbing it pretty solidly. So I want the Bokken to really feel like it's suppressed from the movement. So just get a sense that, that that's happening. We have a tendency, because we're training a lot with partners, one of the problems if, is if we tell people grip lightly, because one of the problems is it starts to make the shoulders rigid. And then I start to do techniques like this, it goes into the shoulder. But as long as I can maintain the shoulders down, and we do a lot of work in this in these classes, so get the shoulders come down, everything's quite loose, but I'm really strongly gripping, super, super strong. And then what I want to get is the feeling like that can pass through the hip, that can pass through the hip. So once you've got the grip, don't be afraid to really tighten it. If you think about the sword work, again, we practice all the time with the sword work, that. So I'm really tightening the body as you do it. Later, you can make that all subtle, uh, subtle, subtle. And when you see an eighth Dan, ninth Dan master do a seminar, he'll tell you, don't grab so hard, you're grabbing too hard, like a Neanderthal. And I've had this before. And it's okay, when you get to his level, you can probably get away with not grabbing so. But we need a good, strong connection to start with. So we tend to start with good, strong grabs. Oh, Sensei was famous for his grab because the stories of people just didn't want to be grabbed at all by him because he, he had a tendency of crushing their arms together. So he would crush bones in their arms together. And they, they learn that quite quickly. So you see a lot of his UKs don't really get so close to him where he can really grab them. So they were a bit afraid of his, his grip strength, but he was famous for it. So also Saito Sensei too. And he really focused on, and he really said gripping was an art in itself that we need to train also. So it's a very 
very useful skill as well. And as long as it's not locking the system up, that's great. That's it. And the last week, just play with the sword a little bit. So play with it as if, as if it's a sword. You've got all these striking movements we do. Striking movements we do. And also play with it as well, just like a kind of stick. So passing through a kind of a tummy through. So all the movements kind of come from this kind of quality. So especially Gikyo. It's like a grounded body. But play, just play a little bit. Last minute or so. Just grounded, grounded, grounded. And again, don't be afraid to grip, especially at the point of impact. Just be a little bit playful with it. Come from different positions, go into rotation work. And how I can deliver that power in, during a rotation, that's one of the one of the skills we need to work on a lot in Aikido because the rotation works really, really tricky for grounding. That's it. Okie dokie, we will stop that. This is really where like the hard and soft need to come together, especially, but for me, the suppleness comes first because if there's no suppleness, I can't really, the hard will be based on a kind of fragile strength. So you want something that's kind of rubbery, very supple. And then I, I later add the power to that. So, or I add the hardness to that. And I don't mean hard as, as, as strength. I mean hard as like really strong in that sense, which is kind of saying the same thing, but English is tricky. That. Okay, we'll finish. Blah, blah. I'm going to Us. Tomo. Arigato. Tomo. Arigato. Thank you. Thank you.